have the confidence in trying something and seeing it through for one. The publishing process is very intricate, so patience with that also. All right, hi everyone. Today we have Sterling, who I'm so excited because I've always wanted to have an author, and not only is he an author, he's an author, and he's an artist, and he is an art teacher, and he has a book where he wrote and did the, all of the art in his book, Good Night Little Dreamer. And he's got a whole book series coming out, the Little Light series. So, uh, Sterling, thanks so much for being on today. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you know, I actually found you from Teacher Lainey. <laughs> Lady, Lady Golf, yeah. Lainey is awesome. She's an awesome uh, teacher, awesome YouTuber, too. And uh, when she had, we had actually, well, we never met in person, but we're from the same hometown. And so, oh, no way. yeah, we connected on Instagram, and then she had found me. And so, She's great. She's great. <laughs> she is, she's awesome. And she has really helpful out school tips for any out school teachers. Definitely go check out her page. I think I asked her to be on my channel sometime soon too. So Lane, if you're watching this. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Look, she's, she's like the guru. So, you know, <laughs> she is the, the out school booking guru. Yes. And yeah. she's actually to a, um, she just launched a private group too, where she helps pe people get bookings without school. But anyway, that's for another conversation. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but she had posted your out school intro video and it's amazing. Thank you, thank you so much, yeah. <laughs> you must be like really deep into also, so you're an artist. Do you do a lot of digital art too? Then is that um, how you- Well, I went to school for at a and for graphic design, as I said in the video. Um, and that has a lot of just like visual art stuff, but I do a lot of different art mediums from growing up. I've done theater, I've done dance, I've done music. And so um, the last thing I was mainly doing before this was music. And so oh, cool. I, I wrote like four different types of genres lyrically and stuff. And then I would help creative direct videos and stuff. So I ended up learning a lot about editing videos and digital art, slight animation, stuff like that uh, from my time with music, you know. Wow, so, so you are, <laughs> you're deep into the arts then. I'm a total artist person, like from, from yay big, I've yeah. always been into the arts. You know what story yeah. I love reading about on, um, I think it was on maybe Amazon, where you had talked about how you started your own, like even your own company in high school like a clothing company right right i started my own uh clothing custom art and apparel business called expressions custom art apparel in eighth grade and then i also had that through high school and where i was doing everything from fabric paint designing to embroidery and graphic graphic prints on t-shirts wow. and everything and so uh i come from a kind of entrepreneurial family i was just a I was more of just an artist, but my parents were really big about, you know, taking what already comes from you and implementing that into, you know, daily life habits or maybe even business structure also. And my mom was a real project person. So if she saw that you could draw or that you could dance, you could do this, she's like, let's go do, let, let's put you in this, let's put you in this, let's make this. So, you know, that just kind of got put into me early. That is yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, I feel like to have parents that help push you and see like, oh, you have that talent. You can do something with that, right? Yes. And get you out of the mindset of like, oh no, you go to school and you got to like get a job where you have something really structured, but saying, no, you have that art brain. You can make that scalable. You can do something with it. You can build uh, income from that. Not a lot of people right. push that to their kids. So that's really special. Right. Yeah, I was, I was definitely blessed, lucky, whatever anybody wants to call it to uh, have the parents that I did but it's an important thing for all kids you know you have to the the world is already going to have certain things like where they teach them that they can't do certain things and so it's very important that as or at least from the experience of my parents that you implement that yes you can into your child's mindset and even I, I implement that into my class structure and stuff too because I just started in uh, in September teaching and you know a lot of this year has been a lot of for kids also it's been a lot of you can't go to school you can't hang with your friends you can't do this because of the pandemic of course and so bringing back a little bit of that yes you can do this or yes you can achieve this and just the just basic things are very important in those building block times of their life 
And it was the same thing for me growing up. So I'm glad I can kind of recycle that into yes. now. <laughs> and I'm, your out school classes look so cool. If you have kids, I'm going to put your link to your out school classes here. Check out his video, check out his art classes. And I want to get into out school more at the end of the video. Uh, okay, because, yeah, yeah, sorry. because no, no, because I do want to, I want to get into more about like how you've been able to start building more of your brand on out school and your classes. But mm -hmm. first, what I really want to touch on is your book, because I know there are so many teachers who want to write books. That's like a dream for just a lot of people, right? You have some idea or you have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a concept in your mind and you've always wanted to do it, but yeah. it's hard to do. So can you just talk a little bit about how Goodnight Little Dreamer and the Little Light series came to be? How did you first get that idea and how did you start going about it? Well, um, like I said, I've always been a person that did all different types of arts but one thing that's been consistent is that i've always been inspired to energize enlighten and empower people with my art my symbol has always been a light bulb or a lightning bolt i have a lightning bolt earring uh and it's really just about taking that positive energy and bringing about and refueling the inspiration in people and so as far as good night little dreamer I was working on some concept art about how to take big concepts and deliver them to younger minds. And so, Good Night Little Dreamer, actually, I have it right here. I'll just hold up the book at the yeah. same time. Um, of course, the kid is sleeping, but Good Night Little Dreamer is also a metaphor for the concept of sharing information, the importance of sharing information. And I was working on how to deliver that in a more childlike metaphor or form. And so that's what inspired me to write the book uh, initially as far as the words. But then I kind of had it for about a year before I actually thought about really going on and publishing it. And so, um, yeah. <laughs> wow, can, I, can we see like a page or two? Yeah, for sure. So when it starts off, it starts off in his room where the child is up playing. Wow, and so and not then, only did you write the book, but you drew all the pictures, that's incredible. Yes, drew all the pictures and everything, which was also, sometimes when you're drawing something, you never know how hard it can be to draw something consistently the same way, like character development stuff. Mm. And so that was a new thing kind of for me also. But as you go on through the book, the child, is having trouble sleeping so he's up playing sometimes you tell the kids to go to bed and they are still up either on the ipad or playing with toys and so the mother comes in and asks him uh why he's still up and the, he explains to his mom that he can't sleep and so that was a metaphor for sometimes we have things in life that we may be trying to figure out and we don't always know how mm -hmm. and that's why the importance of sharing information comes in because until we know better we can't really do better all the time and so the mother teaches him how to count sheep. And so you can just, of course, not every page, but this is a page where he's kind of trying to figure oh. out like, there's no, there's no sheep in the room. What are you talking about? And she explains how he has to use his imagination. And by implementing that. that, he ends up, you know, trying it out. He has like a little skater, <laughs> his imagination. And so, and you know, but through that, he's able to, you know, take something that he learned and succeed yeah. or solve another problem with information that was given to him by somebody else. And, you know, that's, you know, just sharing information in society and, you know, parenting, I guess, what or what also, yeah. you know, teaching, teaching people how to do better and just inspiring others. I mm. love that. I feel mm. like what, what, a what a cool, way to take those ideas and make them for a, a kid for that you know you said those little minds that is so cool and that just goes to show how much thought and heart went into your book and how how excited were you to like be able to first touch the like the first physical copy was it like a dream come true or <laughs> it was a it was honestly amazing because for me i've always grown up just whatever i thought of i just tried so mm. as a kid, I'd be making little riddle books or I'd be making blueprints of robots or, you know, whatever I did. And so for this to see it come into 
fruition, I didn't think of myself as a writer or illustrator until I actually held the book in my hand, you know? And so right behind me, I wrote the book right over there at the art table and drew everything. And so, you know, it, it felt like a little, pro like a, just another project at first, but yeah. I love all the art that I do. So the love was there in it and what I wanted to communicate was there, but until I felt it kind of in the flesh, it didn't really hit me, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's, that's in itself is good advice to teachers. It's like, you just have to start doing it, right? Even if, you know, you weren't, yeah. you weren't an author before, you were an artist, but to, to, right. to, you weren't, you'd never written a, <clears throat> sorry, you'd never written a book before, like, you just have to start doing it. I love that yeah. you say that a person that you're just a doer. Like, I think a lot of people, that's how they get to where they are, right? They're like, well, I didn't really know anything about it, but I just dove straight in and then- Yeah, there's so much success in just taking the first step on things. Cause I wasn't a teacher before, you know, out school either, you know? And so sometimes just really having that or whether if you have to build it or you already have it, just the confidence to be able to try things. Or sometimes if you stuck with something for so long, the confidence to be able to put something else on pause and switch gears for, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, a lot of people, yeah, sometimes people get so, um, we can get so caught on the time invested in one thing or how much we want this particular thing. And it doesn't mean that it'll never happen. It's just sometimes you have to have that, that fluidness to be able to adjust right. to and you stuff like pivot, right? 2020 taught everybody <laughs> you're able to pivot. Yeah. And, uh, I feel like, do you listen to Gary V? Oh yes. I'm you know, a huge right? fan of Gary V. Listening to him, like, I feel like he's a Gary V fan. I love Gary V. And it's the same thing, right? He's like, you're young, try everything right you don't yeah. know until you try so like p put it out there for the world and see if it sticks or see if you even like it you know maybe right. other people mm -hmm. really like it maybe you don't like it so it's not for you or whatever but like when exactly. you don't have time put everything out there what do you have to lose nothing other than not right doing right sometimes people get caught up in the whole uh, what will people think and i even got caught up in that also you know a little bit switching from music to to this, you know, sometimes you might think, oh, what is, what is so-and-so going to say? Or sometimes you can just get caught up in the parameters of, oh, it's not the right time, or, you know, I don't know if this would be the wisest thing to do right now. You know, as an adult, you start thinking of all of the right. real life things that could put you in a box. But that's the cool thing about working with children. Also, that kind of reawakens that dreamer in you a bit to where, because kids don't, Think about there's no box those. for the kids right yeah you can right do, you, know? you can do anything as a kid exactly right yeah and it's important and that and working with kids rekindles that in you as an adult because sometimes you can lose it you know just oh, adulting can, you know can help you kind of lose that sometimes but working with kids is uh that's something i also learned it's, just, it's a two-way street you know they they help they help us as much as we help them <laughs> <laughs> in, yeah. in ways. I started with out school like last month was my first official month with out school and mm -hmm. I've never taught because normally I teach ESL so the past like four years I've taught ESL with GoGo -Go Kid and VIP Kid and mm -hmm. I just got into out school and it's been so fun to teach my own curriculum but also I've never worked with American kids right. it's <laughs> amazing like you yeah. can make jokes and they get it you know with my Chinese students they don't you, they don't get it right and they're usually too small and there's that language barrier with American kids it's so fun and you I do I have been reminded this last month of just how like how how kids think right everything's so literal and it's just like no why, well why can't you do that and how do you do this and it's been really right fun. yeah yeah well, there's no limit to the why they'll ask why I was a why kid too yeah <laughs> the sky is blue why <laughs> you know, that was me so i definitely get that but that it's a beautiful thing though yeah for sure so let's dive into just a little bit of like let's say let's give some quick helpful tips or like just small tips that you could give if a teacher is like all right this is really cool i'm inspired i'm gonna i'm gonna take the leap i'm gonna write my own book what would your advice be what are some like practical tips or what are some things that you didn't expect along the way that you would be like do this um, I would honestly say, first off, writing, uh, writing and publishing a book could be anywhere from a three month to a six month process. So persistence for one, you know, of course, is key 
And along that time, you might try to grow like a little bit of doubt or something like that, but stick with it, you know, and as we were talking about earlier, have the confidence in trying something and seeing it through for one, as far as after you get the book done and the written and illustrated in the publishing process, the publishing process is very intricate. So patience with that also, but I would just say, um, don't be afraid to outsource. Don't put all the weight on yourself. You know, it's okay to maybe have, you need somebody to help with the, what is it? The, the editing or the formatting. Yeah, of the, the page formatting, I would something. imagine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> or if it's like, if you don't exactly know how to copyright or do something, don't, don't be afraid to, you know, outsource a little bit. Don't put all that weight on yourself because then you're putting a job that some people have like a 32 people in a building working on on your <laughs> new shoulders, you know? Yeah. So uh, I would just say it takes a team um, to, because there's so many different parameters of it. So don't be afraid if you don't know to either study up on it and then have the patience or outsource a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, that is really, really good advice. And that's something that I think a lot of people, at least for me, that was a long lesson for me to learn to not put everything on myself. Like even with, even if it's not a book, right? If it's even another project, I know a lot of teachers have side businesses or they're selling certain things. Like with my office, any chair, uh, this time around, I hired a sourcing agent. You know, right. he, he knows that world so much better than me. It's worth it to pay him that and invest in that business or invest in myself by knowing that it's going to save me time actually in the long run and the quality is going to be right. better and I'm not going to like <laughs> cry in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and doing something new, you, I mean, you know, it's it's about always keeping that love and energy in it. So, you know, sometimes if you're getting stuck, don't you don't always have to have the option of burning yourself out trying to figure out this one little piece or something like that. You lose, you can lose steam that way, you know. So, uh, you know, the pro there's pressure in the process, but don't make the process pressure, if that makes sense. That's good. That's so good. Be, it's almost like be. your mom is like a is a motivational speaker or something. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, she is. She just so happens to be a motivational speaker. So <laughs> I guess that kind of got passed down. But um, <laughs> but yes, my mom is an inspirational speaker. She does uh, women's empowerment coaching, and um, she was actually uh, director of a community college for a while. And so wow. there's always been somewhat of a basis of education, I guess, somewhere in my uh childhood of course but but yeah she's the one that helped me with the publishing process also because she has her own publishing entity um from books that she's authored also but um and that was another thing where I it was kind of I was blessed because I was she was able to kind of walk me through that um but sharing information is key right as right, the book exactly says. and not being yeah. afraid to ask and get help too you yeah. know, in whatever capacity using the friends you have and the family members you have and not being afraid to reach out and be like I've got this idea can you help me with this or you know more about me than this um right you know more about this than me mm -hmm. help me and, and it's so it's so simple but it's actually a lot of people don't do it well I feel like I guess you know not to go too far off into a tangent or anything but you know um a lot of the times like I'm 27 and, you know, as a guy, sometimes it's like, yeah, I got it. I'm independent. I got this. You know what I'm saying? I can do this. I'm going to do it all on my own. But, you know, and I don't know if that's just for American culture or, you know, other cultures also. But, you know, there, there's no point in life where you don't need people, you know, for whether it's socially, whether it's to learn new things. You know, uh, no one succeeds at anything just on their own and even if you do something physically by yourself there's something that made you feel like you could do it along the way or kept you energized so yeah 100%. people have to help people that's just a part of how you know changing the world and just kind of keeping that inspiration and positive energy moving so that everyone can fulfill their their purpose or their admirate or aspirations whichever words we can throw out there for, <laughs> for <Yeah>. drinks <laughs> A hundred percent. I totally agree with that. Yes. Uh, I just had another Lala, who is one of my friends who just started her own like holistic wellness company. And we were talking about the power of like having that. 
accountability and support and just the community is so huge mm -hmm. in your success and in your mindset and, and yeah. your actions and all those things. So for sure, definitely. It is. It's, it's important. A building, but it's a building block for sure. What is your long-term vision for the Little Light series and your hope that it inspires to when kids read it? I would say my long-term uh, my long-term goal for this is to not only create products, but create a atmosphere that the kids can really grow with. And so having, taking big concepts and making them smaller, the kid will enjoy the book, but also there's nuggets in there for later as they get older and mature that uh, they can still hand, that they can learn and look back on that we're building blocks of their life. But also for parents, I know, in the age of technology, it's kind of like, there's so much information that children are getting from their tablets, from school, you know, sometimes it outpaces the information and time you're spending with your kids at home. And so having things like classic things like books and other uh, products that I'll be having, it rekindles that relationship between parents and the child of being involved with their learning and the information that they're taking in during these times of their lives. And also, like I said earlier, children give that same spirit of dream, reawaken that dream dreamer in us. You know, so while you are fueling into them, they're also fueling back into you. You know, it, it rekindle, it's amazing how working with children can expand your imagination past what you thought you were working in as an adult with all the other real life stuff put in, you know, because when you look at your child, you, if your child wants to do something, your first thought as a parent sometimes is, how do I make that happen? And not all the other stuff that you put in for yourself sometimes when you want to do something. Yeah. And so it's amazing how children can reawaken that in their parents and other adults also. And so it's important that that relationship stays strong and we don't just give that all to technology and YouTube and everything else, you know, not, not to talk bad about YouTube, but, you know, just, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but just, you know, just the other information, there's just so much out there, you yeah, know, for sure. and, um, and, you know, it starts in the home and I, and I take this a lot from how my parents raised me, you know, uh, it can be very hard sometimes to, by the time you see them after school and all this other stuff like that, they've had a whole day of information by the time they get back to you, you know, from friends, teachers, other people. And so um, sometimes it's important to even if you open up a book just to have that last little time outside the dinner table or something else where you can kind of invest a little bit extra into the child's learning, you know, or interaction. I know that was a mouthful, but no you know, yeah. for sure that's so true that's so true yeah. and i didn't realize that you also had like coloring pages and things too you have a coloring book that goes along with it as well yes i have a coloring book i kind of had it right here just in case i needed to reach yeah. for it but i made the coloring book also oh and so, amazing and is so that on, it is, is the that book. on amazon as well yes it's on amazon let me turn this light on so it can be a little brighter sorry and then oh, it has the line art for the for the book so that I already illustrated of course but they can color the book themselves and yeah. if they want something to look more like their room or they want a sheet that is yellow instead of you know adding that creativity with the structure so that way their imagination is still involved in it I feel like gets them even more involved with what they're learning or the things they're interacting with so yeah, that's why I have the coloring book also. Cool, I like that. Yes, I think yeah. I would have a surfing sheet. Right, you have a surfing sheet? Yeah, you could, You know, they can draw that in there. It's just, you know, sometimes you read a book and you your imagination gets expanded so much, you're like, what if, it, what if this happened? Or what if this? <laughs> you got the coloring books, so you can draw that in. Let's talk now about out school. Okay. Because, so you started with out school in September, you said? 
Yes, September 1st. September exactly. 1st. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, I'm sure a lot of teachers know watching this, they maybe also teach with OutSchool, but for those who don't know, OutSchool is like a marketplace where you're an independent contractor and you list your own classes and that could be anywhere from like yoga classes to makeup classes to I have YouTube classes and, and, and Sterling has art classes. So can you talk a little bit about how your experience with OutSchool and maybe any advice to other teachers who are maybe looking to, or even entrepreneurs, right? People outside the teacher industry that are like, maybe that is a good fit for me. How has that been for you? Well, out school uh, for one has been amazing for me because it really has a good structure and template to work within. Because like I said earlier, I, I had never taught really before. I used to choreograph some dance classes and stuff like that before, but I'd never really been with a full curriculum like teaching before and so i was originally kind of nervous you know doing yeah. that, you know I, that's a that's a whole new I thing before my classes it's right crazy. right right you know and then so it was like so but with communicating with the parents and being able to keep track of uh statistics on who's signing for what and this and what classes are working what's not you know it really gives a good structure almost as if it's meant for teachers that didn't have experience before all those yeah. I don't know in my experience because I did it but you know it has a very good structure um so I would definitely suggest it to anyone but just the fact that um also it with the zoom and interaction stuff like that like how they do the recordings and stuff it really helps you it has the tools to help you improve also in how to really make the the classes yours make the curriculum yours you know um and that's good to have that structure sometimes because sometimes you can get caught up in well i don't really know how to do this little piece and this little detail and this and that and so this kind of gives you the bones you know yeah really you like, without school like almost full time i'm without school pretty much full time i teach eight classes a day wow. tuesday wednesday thursday friday and then i do three on saturday usually Mm -hmm. that's and incredible. so I'm, I'm full time without school yeah yeah so what have you seen that's worked the best for you um I would say for for me um whew. as far as structure for the classes I would say that for it was good to kind of implement a back to the basics type of thing for the kids and just to kind of elaborate on that it the core things I believe for teaching are learning, interaction, and creativity, you know? And so implementing that into my classes, especially during a time where they've been a little bit cut off from that in so many areas with the current situation, yeah. you know, um, those are key tools that those kids need during those building blocks of their life. And so I implemented that into my teaching um into my class structure so when they when they come in we have our little icebreakers and stuff like that to get to know the kids so that they're interacting they get to see who they're teaching who they're learning with mm. and these kids are all over the country you know sometimes other places too and so then we have our structure time where i'm teaching them how to draw and then they have their creative time where they can create everything else around their art and so and then they're allowed to talk during the same time so that they can interact with kids, you know, and they'll talk about all different types of things. It's amazing if you let kids kind of talk to each other, the type of stuff they'll start talking about. That is really helpful, I think, to have to know that you have like that icebreaker of get you getting to know kids because new kids, especially because a lot of kids aren't in school right now, right? They're mm -hmm. all learning. Like my nephew is only e-learning. I feel so bad. It's gotta be I know it's tough for him to sit on that staring at a computer all day and then so he's not interacting with as many kids so that like icebreaker and then that structure time which you like all kids need that structure and then th that creativity time where they can interact with each other and like you said share ideas I think that's really good and that can be applicable for not just art classes but any type of out school class yeah yeah it's, it, yeah because the kids um in this age they're interacting with so much technology it's like they they process things a lot better than sometimes some of us did when we were kids and everything so 
giving them some structure and then having that time for them to allow them to kind of process it. Or sometimes even as an adult where you may have an idea about something, sometimes you just have to kind of bounce the idea off somebody or just kind of talk it out for the light bulb to click. Yeah. You know, kids are doing that too when they can take what they learned and talk about it with other kids a little bit. Or sometimes they go out of class and they go back and show what they learned. And when they do it themselves, it's kind of like, that light bulb clicks. And that I feel like that makes the learning fun because the progress is not just in the structure, but in the social and interaction, interacting time also. Mm. You know, if that, if that makes sense, you know, cause you can, t- you can learn something in a meeting or something like that and it doesn't click till you start kind of really taking those steps to do it on your own, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Do you have any like final thoughts or any words of wisdom for teachers who are wanting to write their own books? I would say for if you're writing your own book, write for a personal cause or purpose so that that love can be there. Hmm. And um, sometimes people get caught up in, oh, I wonder if people will like this or what other people will think, but you're a part of people. So, you know, your ideas, there's somebody out, else out there like you um, that may be thinking the same thing or is into the same type of things or feels the same concept. So use your idea and your book as kind of like a beacon waving in the air, like I'm over here and the yeah. people that are like-minded will come to your, to whatever it is you create. And so don't think about attracting everyone. Think about attracting your audience and finding them because those are the people that are really going to create that community that you really want and enjoy with uh, making your book or whatever it is you're creating. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Julian. Well, thank you so much. If you are interested in the Little Light series or Goodnight Little Dreamer, it would make an awesome Christmas gift. Um, yeah. I'm going to put the link to it down below. And if you are interested in um, any of his drawing classes, if you have kids, definitely check them out. I have that link below as well and Sterling's Instagram. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it.